So considering like all the stresses that happens when you're going to comp, um, and you know, you, you're the advisor for like a lot of different teams at school too, like even including senior design, even though that's not as much as like a competition team. Uh, I don't know if you want to ask this question, but like which team is your favorite? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. And why I can't say that I have a like necessarily a, a favorite a favorite team. Um, you know, I think they they all have their own cast of characters that are that are pretty interesting. Um, uh, but you're kind of like I don't know which ones do which ones do like you really enjoy. I mean, um, I mean, Baja's been great because I think we we're, we're probably the most one of the most advanced teams of the other ones, right? We've had a team for a while. We have a lot of structures in place. We go to several comps, right? And so that's, so that's, so that's, so that's like, I think a really cool, cool aspect of the, of the Baja one. Um, I think we're, you know, it's a very close team. I really like that aspect of the team. Um, in years past, it's been probably one of the closest teams that I've, that I've kind of been a, been a part of. Um, yeah, so yeah, I mean, I think it's, I think it's, I think those are kind of the, the best parts about it. Do you have any advice for Baja teams, assuming that anybody's even going to listen to this podcast, <laughs> do you have any advice for teams right now? Like, as you know, as you, with your experience as an advisor and a competition judge, even though it was virtual, um, doing the comps, like you know, going around, like walking around in the paddocks and like looking at other teams and what they do. Like, what do you think is the biggest thing that either people are missing or that you think that they could do better? better that's a good question um and i think too like uh one is like figure out what your what are your goals and priorities of the team you know i mean do you want to um do you want to be like uh score, placing very high in all the all the competitions or you know are you trying to have your members you know learn as much learn as much as possible and kind of enjoy the enjoy the years that you have at it um so i think kind of understanding that will help you make a lot of choices, right? Like, are you going to let like anybody who worked a lot on the car drive or are you going to, or are you going to go get out a professional, you know, you're going to go find a student who's super light and does cart racing on the side to come in and do your racing for you. Right. It's like, you know, there's like, there's definite decisions uh, that can kind of plague you. Um, I mean, overall, it's just, I think, um, two things. I think one, it's all about t the time you put in, right? I mean, if you want to do well, there's no silver bullet to, uh, can, I mean, one of the things is like all the best information is in books, in my opinion, at this moment. Right. Um, and so it's, you know, people have been thinking about cars for hundreds of years and they've been writing for hundreds of years. And so all the, all the good details are in books, right? Like the YouTube thing is relatively new, right? So you don't have a lot of people that have been in, been in car racing their whole life who are, you know, are making nice YouTube videos these days, right? It's like, um, <laughs> it's not just, it's not something uh, a lot of people in their 60s and 70s are doing, right? Um, and so I think there's a lot of that coming on, but I think, you know, spending time finding a way to sit down and read things and talk to people and not try, don't try and do everything over the internet, right? Like, um, you're not just sending emails, you're calling people, you're meeting with people. Um, you're going places, you know, so I think, you know, get off the, com get off the computer as much as you can, um, and put in the, put in the time. And I think the other thing is like, don't neglect how much of that time needs to go into making a good, a good organization. Right. And, um, uh, finding ways to like, make sure everyone on the team is able to progress and you have your resources in the right place. Um, and that you're just, you know, you're always trying to like, you know, learn, learn new things and you're making sure that knowledge is continuing, right? Which involves not only just writing stuff down since, you know, in general, not a lot of people read stuff that gets written down anyways on the team, especially these days. Now you just have, you know, you got hundred gigabytes of data from the year, right? Like it's some, it's, you expect some new member to go there and dig through all your, you know, scribbled notes, you know? So a lot of it is, you know, getting people in and training them, spending the time with the new members and teaching them, not just designing everything yourself, right? So I think, I think creating the uh, organizational structure to, that's like sustainable and you know, supports the team is, is probably like the most important thing and that will set, 
set you apart um, uh, kind of year after year. Um, so that's, that's my, I guess those are kind of my short, roughly short uh, bullet points about that. So speaking of like learning, I know like one of the biggest impressions that I got of Baja culture as a whole, not, not from our team, like not on a, not on an individual team level, but like on Baja as a whole, one of the things that I got the impression of was that a lot of teams tend to like keep their secrets, right? Like how their car performed well, how they designed their car and like they save it only for the judges and they don't really like to share that information. And if they do, they keep it kind of vague. And I, you know, there's like not a whole lot of collaboration between teams. Like I feel like in SoCal, we're pretty close in terms of like, they've tried to set up events in the past, like mini competitions just among SoCal and stuff like that. And like they talk on social media and stuff like that. And they, you know, they try to get together. But as far as like sharing a knowledge base, that's kind of something that I feel like teams as a whole don't really do. It's very like the trade secrets that make you win are the ones that you want to keep hidden so that other people don't, you know, pass you in terms of like their skills and the things that they know. Um, but we've been taking that uh, in a completely different direction. And one of the things that was kind of a big hit <laughs> on social media, specifically like on Reddit, if you guys don't follow um, like the Baja SAE Reddit, or there's a formula SAE Reddit, I guess. Um, but one of the things that we actually shared was, even though it started as just for our school, it's a, a YouTube educational series that you actually recorded. And Bachman, he recorded it mostly for us as a school and as a team on campus, and not just for Baja, but for Formula 2. But we put it on YouTube and we made it widely available to other people. Slowly, like very slowly, the numbers have been climbing for like the views and stuff and, and how many other people are like either subscribing to our YouTube or like actually watching the videos. Um, and we, we recently also put them on our website and everything. But that was kind of like, I feel like it was, it was a, kind of a hit, you know, like a lot of people, I don't know if anybody's watched them, but if you guys have watched them, let us know what you think about them. Were they helpful? Were they not helpful? But, but the question is like, how, how, like, what do you think about that? Like, what do you think about the whole sharing information with people and like, how do you feel that your videos are being watched by people now? Yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, they might be like a really big, um, a really big, like, how do you say, like a database of information that people might refer to yeah. in the future. Yeah. Um, yeah, so like the first thing, I mean, my general feeling is that most of the teams are extremely open. I mean, uh, um, not that we've ever had a team that was like so competitive, but at least like the sense I've got from other teams or judges that have been around a while is like, you know, maybe if your team top number one and top team number two comes over and wants to see how you, how you, you know, made your custom CVT, right? Like, all right, maybe, maybe you'll be a little hesitant there, but in general, I found if I talk to somebody like they'll spill their beans about it. They don't, they're not really that, they're not, they're not really that protective of it. I figured the, the hardest part, I think, is just, you know, it's, it's hard enough to communicate between, you know, your steering and your suspension team to get good communication, right? As it is just to like, oh, we're going to have, you know, our suspension team can have good communication with an outside team. I think it's just as, as time is so limited, it's really hard to have like, you know, a lot of continued collaboration. You know, we've definitely, like our formula team, we went last year and hung out for the day at the USC formula team and talked about cars all day, basically. Right. Um, I think it's just a lot of, it's takes a lot of, takes a lot of time. Um, and so I think it's just to do it extensively takes, takes a bit, a bit of work, but I think I, I wouldn't hesitate to approach teams because in general, I haven't found a team that's really, really said no to any, anything, even when I ask them, you know, a specific piece of, for a specific piece of information. Um, on the video series, yeah, I think it's I think it's cool. Um, I'm glad that I see like other people are finding you know interesting stuff about it. Um, I mean, there's and you know none of that stuff is really 
I would say like secrets, right? Like um, I really enjoyed doing it because it just gave me a chance. Like, all right, I'm going to go, go read the, what I could see, what I could find to be what I thought were like the mo the five best books on it or something. Right. So I, I could go and read and see the approaches. Um, and, and I would say a lot of times, like they're not like, you're not going to watch those videos and all of a sudden be like, all right, you know, you know everything about it, but kind of the idea is at least like, all right, you know, the, you know, kind of the key parameters that you should be thinking about and some of the key physics associated with your system enough that you could now go and read some books, talk to someone, and you could kind of learn on your own about how to like, how you, how you should go about thinking and designing about it. Right. Um, and yeah, I mean, uh, if anything, I do them again, I, we, I would make them shorter, right? Like, even if you watch them at like two times speed, they're probably like an hour, right? So if anything now, it's like I chunk them all into like little 10 minute, little 10 minute bits about, about each specific thing. Um, but I mean, Sergio did an awesome job producing all of them. Hats off to him and providing those to folks um, and making them shorter so they weren't even longer than what they are now. Um, but yeah, I think, uh, so yeah, I think, um, you know, they're probably, uh, I think they got a lot of good info. Um, um, if you kind of like, you know, if you got some time to sit down and it's only a couple hours, right? So if it's your, if you're doing a, if you're doing a suspension, you know, a couple hours, you know, isn't the, isn't the end of the, isn't the end of the world, but, uh, but yeah, so I, I had a lot of fun making them and I learned a lot while, while doing them. And I still, when I get feedback, I mean, I mean, um, a lot of this stuff is just kind of the basics, right? So what is actually done on, you know, an actual race team is insane these days and just the amount of computational power and the amount of things they can model, right? They can, they can really take things to the next level, but like you can't even begin to think about any of that if, if you don't know the basics and the basic forces and the basic way we think about these different systems. So, so I think it even helps you, even though it's not, it's not going to make, you know, you're not going to watch it all of a sudden, you know, be the best suspension designer <laughs> out of the box or something. <laughs> Do you actually books? have any of those books off the top of your head that, that you know, like you can recommend for yeah. people to read? Like what were the I, best reads? Well, I don't know if you have that with you. I mean, uh, the book by Milliken um, is basically kind of the Bible for formula and the Bible for vehicle dynamics. It's actually very interesting that in like the World War II era, a lot of great minds were thinking about airplanes and airplane dynamics, right? Um, I think as a lot of the war, right? You know? And so they came up with a lot of ways to think about the dynamics of, of, of airplanes. And Milliken kind of took a lot of that, that approach and applied it to vehicles, basically. Um, and so he was, that book's really kind of the, I'd say the foundation for a lot of like vehicle dynamics. Um, you know, there's also, there's also uh, you know, uh, how to make your car handle. I kind of like that. I kind of like that book. Um, there's a, I forget the name of all of them, but there's a, a chassis book that we, we looked at a lot that talked about kind of different chassis back in the day. Um, there is, uh, let me, let me think for a second about some of the, uh, some of the other ones. Um, Katz, K-A-T-Z has a book on, uh, on arrow stuff. That one's, that one's really, that one's like a really interesting book for, for arrow. Um, so yeah, so those are those are like some of my some of my favorites to read. Where it's like, oh man, like this this is like a really interesting way to approach it, and very very thorough um, in their treatment of it. And we also did a lot of like SAE papers. There's a lot of SAE papers on you know doing different suspension designs and stuff that we try and we try and bring in there. Um, uh, John Haywood's book on internal combustion engine fundamentals. That's like the bible of engines, basically, right? Um, so that's a that's like a great book if you just want to learn kind of the basics of how an engine works um you know a lot of this stuff is not as much necessarily applied you know it's not gonna you know tell you you know how do you grind a valve or something like that you know but uh um uh but you know it tells you kind of just what are the things to really be thinking about um but yeah so those are those are some of my those are some of my kind of favorites along the way there We'll probably maybe we'll get like a little collection and put it on our Reddit for people to kind of peruse. Yeah. See if they think cool. that they could read too. That'd yeah. be fun. Yeah. Join the Reddit. Get some books. Yeah, that'd be cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Juan, I think you were gonna ask something. Um. Yeah. So, 
because you're putting out all of these like this pretty much SAE educational series, do you have a lot of people reaching out to you? Like, is there, a, have you been noticing that a lot? Yeah, especially because, because we, we do like a lot of little like MATLAB calculators or, um, you know, little simulations and stuff. And so I get people kind of reaching out wanting, wanting, wanting some of the, um, wanting some of the stuff that we worked on and that sort of thing. Um, so I get, I'll get that quite a bit. Um, so people ask for like our handbook because I go into our handbook quite a bit. So I'll even send that out. Um, it's not really That's so trade, cool. trade secrets to that, to that stuff these days. Um, yeah, yeah. These days I've been really interested in learning a lot about the, the physics of the CVT and like how can you predict the performance, the, predict the shifting profile of a CVT. Mm -hmm. That's been a huge can of worms, just the number of free body diagrams you got to do to an ethical MAs that you got to write and that, and that yeah. system is pretty overwhelming. So, uh, um, so, but it's that one, that one has been interesting to me. Um, and then definitely, definitely in formula, arrow is so complex um uh that it, that one i like i continue to like to learn a lot about um i've been reading a book lately about f1 technology and also there's a book uh interviewing ross uh what's his name ross braun right he's kind of like he won a bunch of titles with with uh ferrari he had his own braun gp he worked with williams he basically started mercedes on the path that they are today basically so it's a, a great book um I don't know how podcast <laughs> it's a cool book i mean he talks a lot about just how, as a kind of a leader of a of a race team you know how do you how do you approach how do you approach it and there's a lot of cool aspects in terms of you know you're not just doing the technical but the you know the political the economic the structure you know um of your team and how do you how do you approach that um so those ones those ones are those ones are are always kind of uh the interesting ones for me today to, the ones i've at least this week that I've been trying to kind of been trying to work on. So um, it's, it's just cool. So I like to learn that. I don't know. I don't know why I'm kind of weird in that way, but I kind of like to learn. <laughs> I don't, I don't like to not know how things work. It's kind of like, like that <laughs> kind of bothers me. You know, it's like, uh, there's a great book by Peter Wright uh, called like F1 technology from 2000s. And it's just crazy what they were doing in the 2000s and F1. I mean, th those folks are amazing. Um, can't, can't even imagine what the what the folks are doing these days. Oh, I see, I see, I see. That's yeah, I'm looking, I'm looking at book. Dang. Ron GP. Yeah. I need to look more into all this. He uh, bought Honda. So in the late 2000s, he bought, or 2010s, he like bought, or he was kind of at Honda, but then ended up buying Honda and then Mercedes and making Braun GP and then Mercedes ended up buying Braun GP. Yeah. Um, oh, look at that. Oh, yeah, it's oh, really it's you said total competition, right? Yeah, there might be a couple, couple books, but that's the one I've been. Yeah, total I've competition been. lessons in strategy from Formula One. Um, I swear I saw oh, like a YouTube video. Um, for like, SAE SoCal, we just had a, a webinar. Um, one of them was one of the guys who was on the team for Nissan. I think he works on like Nissan GTX or something like that. And then the other one was with the guy who developed the Hans device. I don't know. He was an, is an author of a book um, about the Hans device, which is like the safety device that you put like on your neck. Yeah. Check, check those out for SAE SoCal. But those were some good reads that they had recommended as well. I don't know. Maybe we can put those up there too. Um, yeah. None of you kids read anything these days. So I don't know, I don't know how much... <laughs> How much yeah. of We're so strong with homework. <laughs> <laughs> no. Maybe we should do more of that, though, huh? We're waiting for your video to come out on all of this. All of this, <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know. I think you have to. For me, I hated reading. I always hated reading, and so I like. I had to. I feel like that's I, a common know, theme in engineering, actually. I mean, because people who do it like really are into building stuff. They don't want to read. They just want to build it and learn that way hands-on so I think there's kind of probably a big disconnect okay. between like the books that get published that are related to engineering and like the students who are actually like in the learning process um, and the thing I find too that I think uh I think a lot of students miss out on is um like a video like a book it, the pace at which you can learn from a book is so fast because you can sk quickly skip everything that 
is not useful to you. You know, I see, I see a title sentence of a paragraph that is not interesting to me. Like I skip that paragraph, right. You know, where it's like, if you're watching a video, right. Like you can't just like click through the video, you know? So it's like, it's like a video I'm sitting there and I'm just like taking in all this mostly garbage stuff. Actually, they're bookmarked now. So if you hover over the little, yeah, this technology it'll is tell you rough. what section. <laughs> I honestly, I watch all my videos now at like at least one point two five speed. Like I can't sit there and watch it be slow. It like takes way too long. Yeah, uh, but the reading you can just get through stuff so fast, and the content is is all is pretty much always of higher quality. It's just. You know, I think the vetting that goes through through making and selling a book is just pretty high versus, you know, us making YouTube YouTube videos. You know, it's uh, the so it's like so, and then I don't know. You eventually, I think, you learn to enjoy it, right? So a lot of the stuff these days, I kind of learned like, all right, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna take an hour, schedule an hour in my day to, um, to go and just read and kind of read it to enjoy it, not try and rush it or anything. And that makes it much more fun than like, oh, I have to cram for an exam. And I did the same thing with my PE this summer, basically. So I was doing a bunch of FE, I was doing a bunch of FE workshops with students. So I was like, I've never taken FE, I'll go take the FE, see what it's like, right? Like you give people better <laughs> advice, right? You gotta walk in their shoes a little bit. Um, and so I went and took the FE and I was like, well, I might as well just take the PE now, right? I've like been studying most of this stuff. So it's just like, you just, right, I'm gonna put two hours every morning, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. I got a, a study book and I got an example problem book and basically said, I'm just gonna go through the book and then I'm gonna go through all the problems, you know, wash and, wash and repeat one more time basically with another one. And if I feel good, I always go take it, right? And so I went and take it and passed it. It's like, time flies. If you just, if you like to schedule a couple hours each week to do something, um, pretty soon it's, uh, Pretty soon you're, uh, you'll be done. You'll you'll have done it, right? So, um, it's funny too. I learned that from my mom actually. So she um, she was the editor of a magazine. She was a writer forever. Um, but she wanted to do something that had more of an impact on people. So she wanted to become a nurse, and she was just taking a a class at our local community college. She was an English person. She was going to do nursing, right? You know, she basically had to do five she years of hard, school, yeah. right? She had to get to all the bio. She had to do all the math, all the physics and stuff that it takes to get into a nursing program. And she was just taking a class, a, you know, a class a semester or something like that, uh, maybe two classes. And it was going to take her like three years, but it was just like, it was like, boom, she started and three years were over. And then like, before you know it, she was a nurse basically, right? And it was just, yeah, do a little bit, you know, just, uh, you know, that's how I got my degree. <laughs> yeah. You know, instead of, instead of playing video games, you know, like uh, in all your free time, like, all right, I'll, I'll spend three hours on the video games and three hours on something that that is interesting to me to learn and uh, and it goes by quick. All right, we're gonna switch gears to something a little bit more silly now. Have you read your Rate My Professor reviews? Uh, it's been a while. <laughs> I usually I get bored about I get uh, bored maybe like once a year and I go check it and count how many chili peppers I have and. <laughs> I see right now. <laughs> you know, they actually, oh, no, that's they actually good. removed chili peppers from right my professor. I was looking. Oh, see, that, that's, that's how long it's been. I, you know, <laughs> when they I, I have no interest anymore. <laughs> how many chili peppers did you have, Bachman? <laughs> it wasn't good. I was not hitting my targets, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> that's part of the reason for the diet this summer. <laughs> right now, you have a 4.8 out of 5 on right my professor. Good. Good. Not not showing off. Not falling behind. The needy, <laughs> the needy part of the curve. That's that's where you want to be. A hundred percent said that they would take your classes again, and people said the level of difficulty is two point eight, which I'm assuming is out of five. I don't know. That would be reasonable to me. About about average difficulty. I teach a lot of the younger, a lot of younger students, and so you know it's not highly technical. I teach design, so it's design and manufacturing very hands-on um so i think it's a it's an easy class to get decent decent rating on decent ratings on people are tagging you as skip class you won't pass do you think that's yeah. true like they have to come to lecture oh, oh totally i mean not the covid is a different is a different era now but um but before it was basically like all right you gotta 
you gotta work in your teams to design and build something, right? Like, you know, if you don't put in the time, you're just not gonna, you're not gonna get it done basically, right? So, but it wasn't like, I don't know, I felt like it was pretty straightforward. It was like, put in the time and you're gonna get an A. Um, so that's, I kind of structured the class around that, around that a bit. Um, and that it wasn't, you know, anyone who put in the effort was gonna get an A, it was kind of the goal basically. Um, but if you, if you just think you're smarter than everybody, then you have to be a lot smarter than everybody to get an A. <laughs> Joke have, once in a while. We have a couple people who responded to our flyer on Instagram about actually being in class with you. Um, somebody come get Abel to table 10 because he was just, <laughs> He was just asking silly questions that weren't even about the podcast. He's uh -huh. asking, are you going to curb your lecture grades next semester? <laughs> really? Is this, this is, where did you post this? It is on Instagram. It's on the Baja Instagram. Oh, am I going to curb my grades next year? Yeah. Everybody gets A's. I don't even need to curb it. It's like, uh. He said, yeah. how do you get, how do we get A's in your class? What? Yeah. <laughs> as, long as, you try, as long as you try hard, you'll be, you'll be fine. Um, <laughs> It's uh, it's all, it's all about, it's all about effort, I would say, in in my class. Um, put in the time and and uh, and you'll do well. Um, ask a lot, ask a lot of questions. Um, He's yeah, also yeah. asking if you can get a SolidWorks download if they take your lecture class. Is it or is it only for lab? <laughs> <laughs> if you take you the class, you SolidWorks. Able to table somebody. Able to table Anybody at Cal State LA can get SolidWorks can get for free. <laughs> Um, let's see. Who else had a really good question? Uh, that underscore JT underscore guy. Um, is there a possibility for students to earn credits towards their degrees by joining an engineering project like FSA, Bahasa, EcoCar, things like that? Yeah. Um, I mean, I try and make it so that uh, if you're really interested in the cars that during senior design, you can do your project on it. Um, I've had in the past students do uh, kind of like senior theses associated with the associated with the teams, but that has gotten more rare now that we'll typically have a full senior project um, associated with it. So yeah, you can you can sum, but it's not you know it's uh, it's basically going to be your senior project. It's not going to mean you don't have to take thermodynamics or something like that. Um, unfortunately, with mechanical engineering, there's just so many the range of thermo and fluids and heat transfer on the wet side to machine design with stresses and strains to dynamics and controls. It's like there's just so many different subjects to, you know, at least know how to approach uh, that you can't really just wipe any of those out. Okay. So a couple of people are asking about um, the future. So one of them, they kind of asked the, the same type of question. So from Instagram, we have no home seafood. <laughs> I don't know what kind of username that is. Um, how do you imagine the engineering field growing within the next five years? And then pretty much the same question from Reddit. If somebody said, uh, it's uh, the Nahomi 69. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I just, hey, I didn't make their username, but they asked pretty much the same question. Like, how do you think the engineering field will grow within the next five years? <laughs> yeah i mean sad sadly enough for people for people like me is i think the trend is more towards things being digital right i mean i think the power of computers getting higher and higher and the increased ability to have uh, complex algorithms be useful um is totally gonna drive us towards doing a lot more a lot more kind of modeling and have a lot more sophisticated control systems with big data. Um, so I think, so I think you're going to see, you're going to see a lot of engine, you know, I think it's going to be, it's never going to hurt you to be able to program in another language or to have more programming skills um, or, you know, know, know more about different algorithms to handle, handle data. Um, so I think that's, you know, we're going to see self-driving cars come, come around here, right? We're gonna have a lot of stuff that's um, learning how to do control algorithms on its own by just taking in data from its surroundings. So yeah, so I think we're gonna see a lot, a lot more of that in all the, all the fields. Um, I think, yeah, uh, you always have, I think, kind of um, 
more automation, you know, especially in, uh, you know, the area of like food um, and agriculture. Um, so I think, so I think that's, that's the way, that's the way we're heading in the, um, in the, in the future, I think five years, five years of engineering, but, um, you know, a lot of the same principles apply in engineering through all these things. Um, uh, so I think in, in the end, it's not, it's not really going to change the way, way you approach a problem. You just have some different tools that you'll be using more often. A couple more questions. So one of them is like not really related to engineering at all, but like, what are your hobbies like outside of school, outside of SAE, just like as a person, what do you like to do for fun? Outside SAE? I didn't know there was outside SAE. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> I told you. I told you that's what he was going to say. Tell me about your, your Mustang. That's, that's what I expect my students. That's what I expect my students to say. Um, <laughs> yeah, I saw. Uh, I got my '66. I got my '66 Mustang that I've been working on. Juan's brother hooked me up with some uh, suspension work. Yeah, baby. Um, he also uh, too, some of the know. steering and stuff. But I. I recently was doing, uh, you know, uh, rebuilding some of the carb on it, replacing the fuel pump that that uh, we found that was leaking. Um, so a lot of there's always there's always some little things to do on it. Um, I'm trying to get more into I gotta get more into sports again. Uh, Basketball is my go-to these days, just because it's like I love how you just can go down to the park and you can play one-on-one, you can play by yourself, play with ten people, right? It's just good exercise doesn't cost any money like so I gotta I want to get back into my I I played a lot in Boston I had a, I had a lot of friends who we played and we go a lot of pickup games and stuff but uh did you but, play in the last um engineering like we had at Cal State LA we had a basketball competition among like all right. the engineering departments yeah. did you play in that oh yeah I broke all these these students ankles <laughs> dunking on those kids what did you <laughs> I play? didn't see it coming Baja didn't have, I don't think Baja or Formula had a team at the time. So who did you uh, play with? Who was my, who was our team? We had a, we had kind of a funky team of some Formula folks and some Hydrogen Station folks. It was, I forget the kid's name at Hydrogen Station, who was kind of, who was kind of putting together the team. The best team was going to be Evelyn Wong's uh, team, uh, but she ended up leaving, like, halfway through the day and so they got they got so we didn't actually have to face them in the championship but they they uh but the bot her and that biomed crew had some serious game um that we were worried about but I am. <laughs> <laughs> of all the but people. yeah yeah I mean, we played a bit we had some we had some we had some basketball games with with baja um i'm surprised how many of you kids haven't played a lot of played a lot of sports and Juan, Juan, Juan had some game, but, oh, but uh, not, wasn't enough to keep up with you. We played baseball. We played, baske we played basketball. We played ultimate frisbee. That was yeah, you and Cody. Oh my! Oh God. man, I died that day. The ultimate <laughs> frisbee was so intense. Between you and Kevin Nar, I was like dying. I was like, I don't even play sports. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, couldn't breathe by the end of the day. I that baseball was a. Me. Oh, sorry. That baseball was a quagmire, though. I don't know what Christian was thinking. I was like, we're going to have, like, a, a Formula versus Baja game, and he, like, brings nine baseball players that nobody knows to the game to play. It was like... I it was like, what? did that behind his back. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how that happened, but I was like, I was like, what are we doing here? Like, why is the Baja team playing against baseball players? Like, <laughs> any fun? <laughs> they had their full gear and everything, like masks and gloves, and we're just like in our freaking shirt, <laughs> in our jeans. You guys don't even know the rules. You guys, and no. some people were running to third base after they after they struck out. They didn't even know what was going on. <laughs> <laughs> but it was okay. I think we made the most of it. But that was. I think a lot of the sports went well. That was uh, the event went well, but formula formula has to take a little. Uh, <laughs> they're in trouble a little bit for that one. <laughs> so um, the last question, as far as like the interview portion goes, is like, where do you see yourself in the future? Like, are you going to be an advisor and at Cal State LA forever, or um, like, do you have any goals like in your life? 
<laughs> yeah. Do you have any yeah. reason yeah. living? <laughs> we we get a lot of attention, which we like. We always appreciate yeah. that. But like, as far as Bachman, yeah, it's a good question. Ten, um, twenty years from now. Yeah, I mean, I've like been super lucky and privileged to basically be like, oh, I want to be a, I want to be a professor, right? And you do it when you're thirty years old or something like that, right? And so you're kind of like, well. What, what do you want to do next right um and uh you know i think it's tough right like you know a lot of the natural progression is like oh go become a chair or a dean but it's like i don't know you don't interact with students in you know as i would say robust of a way in terms of you know you're not not really doing as much technical stuff you're doing a lot of advising and solving problems and so i don't know those things don't don't interest me don't interest me as much right and so I don't know. I'd I'd like to see Cal State. I mean, I'd like to see SAE be a regular or Bahan Formula at Cal State be a regular top ten contender. That'd be that'd be a nice thing to to see in see in the five years. But uh, in terms of me, um, yeah, uh, I don't envision going going anywhere uh, anytime soon. You know, I like my job. I think we got a lot of good seeds with our senior design, the makerspace my research so yeah i think i'd like to continue to kind of grow those into more meaningful experiences for the students uh settle into like a better work-life balance i think you know you think your first like three or four years in a professional job can be very consuming uh in your job right so figuring out okay how do you balance these things that are important to you at work and balance Maybe. some things that are important at home so that's yeah i don't know crystal you just started so you might get you might have some kind of experience with with that but I mean maybe you're remote sometimes so you get to be at home still sometimes but uh yeah but yeah so yeah I don't <laughs> yeah like I don't I don't have any incentive I mean based on the stuff we talked about earlier like oh I really want to go to UCLA and move my way up the prestige ladder of universities or something right but I think kind of just growing growing the ability to help students at Cal State LA would be be a cool thing to do um I don't know I I never did a lot of a lot of you know, I worked a little bit in consulting, but it was kind of like R and D consulting. Um, I think it'd be fun to like do a year, go work for go work for a company, or you know, go work for an F one team. You know, that wouldn't happen because I don't have the oh, knowledge. Yeah. I don't have enough knowledge <laughs> or something, right? But maybe you go you go work for like a work on the pit in Indy five hundred or something. Maybe I'd be able to do like that'd be a fun a fun thing. Just you know, I think if, you know the broader your experiences are, I think the better teacher you can be, right? You know, if you're you're very one-dimensional your very your teaching is very one-dimensional so so uh, or at least in general i think you're limited so so yeah i'd like to i'd like to try some some of that for a year maybe a sabbatical or something like that which f1 team yeah you gotta, you gotta be straight with me, me. Yeah. uh well i'd want to hang out with albon but i don't know i like red bull that much they they're the ones who kind of kind of blew up the the foda the the formula one so Formula One back in like uh, I don't know the 2010 mm -hmm. uh, kind of range, they had like an agreement amongst all the all the teams, and they weren't going to sign that 2013 Concord Agreement, mm -hmm. um, which is kind of the agreement, uh, at least as far as I know, with the um, commercial rights holders, maybe also the FIA. But you kind of have those three legs. You kind of got the team, the commercial rights holders who who own uh, kind of own a lot of the monetary process and you have the FIA who regulates all this technical process, right? Um, and Red Bull kind of actually was the ones that uh, they broke ranks with a lot of the other teams, which then led to Ferrari breaking ranks, which led to everything falling apart and basically the, the money dictating the stuff and not the teams. Um, and, uh, and so, so maybe it wouldn't be, so maybe it wouldn't be, uh, maybe it wouldn't be the Red Bull because of that, even though I like Albon a lot, um so that's a good question though what team so what team would it be you know that's probably the person i root for the most i mean i like learning how the best do it so i mean mercedes would be be yeah. cool and that would be cool in that cool in that aspect um so maybe not be? like dipping your toes in like williams or like racing point or something <laughs> yeah williams is an interesting interesting yeah. one i don't know how long i'd have a job for <laughs> racing racing point i feel like i just i be learning a lot a lot about mercedes but just wouldn't have <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no i i don't know i don't know anything about that about the about the process and you know the 
a copying component of, of it, you know, of, um, you know, I, to really judge, you know, how different what they did was something else, what someone else yeah. did, you know, and maybe, you know, they just copied a whole card and other people kind of copied different components from different people or something. Right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's, that's my, that's my, that's my instinct is go, go learn from the best if you can. That'd be cool to have an advisor that used to be an F1 for a racing team. I was, <laughs> so get, I was trying to get a guy who works at SpaceX who I've met judging to come and come and talk, but I gotta, I gotta follow up. I gotta follow up with them. Uh, have him be on the podcast with us. <laughs> That'd be interesting. Yeah, we could you, maybe uh, maybe I'll I'll reach out to him see if he wants to do the do the podcast. You could probably find him on LinkedIn. I forget his name off the top of my head now, but um, I actually found him. I was trying to do uh some I was trying to do some kind of like lap time estimations uh, <laughs> and this and I found this guy's thesis from Oregon State. Uh, yes, Oregon State, and it was and it was like really cool what he did. Um, and so I've been reading this. And then all of a sudden I figured out he was like one of the judges. And so I kind of just saw, uh, saw him online the other day and then kind of started chat, chatting with him. But it was funny because I had just been, I'd just been reading his, his dissertation, basically. <laughs> yeah. Funny but, how you meet people, huh? Yeah. I think everywhere. Yeah, totally. Oregon State does some cool stuff with their Formula team, though. They pair with a German team. So they actually have yeah. a very strong collab- collaborative team. And they're like, you know, some of the best in the world. I think the German team has a reputation for sure. Yeah, yeah. Formula student, they have a formula student in Germany, and that there's teams there. Aren't they are, the ones that did like fastest time? Fastest yeah, I mean, education? yeah. I mean, there's probably you know thousands, thousands of German teams basically. But the German, that German team did set like the like uh, I forget what what was it. It was like a. Uh, it was fastest zero to sixty ever. I think something yeah, like that. Yeah, like zero to sixty in like three seconds or something. I don't know. Yeah. I, I'm, I don't know. I'm kind of guessing couple, that number. It was like pretty short. Yeah. A couple batteries and electric motor strapped to a student's back. Let them, let them, <laughs> let them go. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So that's, I, there's a big racing. LA used to have a huge racing culture. I mean, this is where a lot of the winning board stuff came out of in the, in the sixties. Um, you know, all those, all those, um, you know, Carol Shelby, uh kind of shops came out of the la area basically um so la used to be a big kind of big racing 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 culture um but i think in europe these days especially the formula style racing they're they're kind of there's a big culture around that and you know i think a lot of this there's a lot of schools that are kind of like you know race schools even out there and teams that support those schools and stuff they're we don't have as much of that out here anymore. So thank you to Dr. Bachman for being on our podcast and spending some time talking with us and sharing his experience as an advisor, as a teacher, as somebody in SAE, and just as an engineer in general. The views, information, or opinions expressed during the Stain Muddy podcast are solely those of the individuals involved and do not necessarily represent those of Baja SAE and Cal State Los Angeles.